What's up creatives, today I'm showing you how to design your own t-shirt and hoodie and you can use these skills to design your own stuff after this video, completely custom. And just remember, you guys got this, all right? You could do this, I promise you. It takes practice, let's get it. Uh, back on deck on my fly uh, really on, really on my really on. Pay some respect to my mindset Hair blowing smoke, catch a contact Really mad they can't stop us Back on the scene, young conscious Always been me, young popping Guys, we're ready to begin. I'm in Photoshop and I need to prepare my images for the t-shirt design. Now, I, at this point, I didn't know what I even wanted to do with this t-shirt design. I just knew that I had a brain and I needed to make it work. And I wanted to challenge myself to take an object like this that's so simple and make something cool out of it. So right here, I'm just taking the brain and I'm cutting it out of its background. I ended up using remove background because it just made a better selection. And sometimes if I can get away with using remove background, which is Adobe's AI. So use Adobe's quick selections when you can get away with it. But if it doesn't work, you can always use things like the polygonal lasso tool, the magic wand. There's a bunch of different ways you can cut something out of its background. Even the pen tool, some people like to use. Now I'm going through with my lasso tool and just cutting off little excess things that I don't need. Usually I spend around 15 to 20 minutes on making a selection. It really depends on the object that I'm cutting out. But um, I have a clean selection here. My brain is fully cut out. Out. not my brain but uh, some fake plastic brain it's always a good idea to duplicate your main image that you're using so you have a backup in case you mess up or anything like that so that's what I did right here and I do want to desaturate one of the copies this way I can start applying my effects to the copy and I have a backup like I said in case I mess up something now I'm applying a simple level adjustment to my image that way I can mess with the shadows midtones and highlights to bring out some more details on the brain that way when I add my effects later on it's just it's going to look much better that way so i'm kind of preparing it before i start doing all the crazy editing on it from here all i need to do is turn layer 4 copy into a smart object and then go up to filter gallery and then i could start applying my effects the two filters that i always use is torn edges and grain and together you get this really awesome vintage print look i play with these levels until i get the desired look i don't want to lose detail on my image but i also don't want to um, blow out the highlights too much if that makes sense so you just really need to mess with the levels on both the torn edges and grain to get the look you're going for usually you want torn edges over grain you want it on top of grain that's how you get this effect if grain is above torn edges sometimes it doesn't look as cool but Play with it, see what works for you. Another thing I did was added a halftone pattern above torn edges. Halftone patterns are really cool if you wanna make something look screen printed, obviously. So I really like this effect and screen printers actually use this to transition gradients. Instead of, you can't print a gradient, let's just put it that way. So they use halftone patterns and this allows them to print gradients on screen mesh. So my filter gallery effects are applied and now all I need to do is go back up to levels and mess with the shadows, midtones, and highlights. And this is to bring out some of the textures that we just added with the filter gallery. Now that we added smart filters to our brain copy, we can copy these over to our other photo assets and apply the same effect. And that's what I'm doing right here. You will have to mess with the levels adjustments in order to get the effect to look right and go into the filter gallery again and play with some of the levels if it doesn't look right. But once you do all that, you should be good to go. Another thing that I did was added a rectangle. I just wanted to fill up some space on the bottom right of the design. So I thought of having kind of like a diagram right there. So I made a rectangle and I just added a small stroke to it. And this way, when I add an image inside of it, it will have that nice little white border. And right here, I'm using my second photo asset. Back on deck on my fly back. Really on, really on my Pay some respect to my mindset. Hair blowing smoke, catch a contact. Really mad they can't stop us. Back on the scene, young conscious. Always been me, young popping. I ain't really here for the gossip, nah. Blah, 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 yum. Try to play me, but you tried it. Way too wavy, gotta ride it. Pull up on you, yeah, we slide it. Make our eyes roll when I slide in. Neck on wrist, on shine, man. Tell them say less, no comment. And we only here for the commas. Now I need to make a second copy of my brain with the filter gallery effects, rasterize all those together, and then we're gonna actually play with the liquify tool under filter. So what the liquify tool does is it allows me to basically make it look like part of the brain is dripping or drooping, whatever you wanna say. It just gives it this really, uh, realistic drip effect i really love it try it out it's fun it's really really fun you can mess around with this effect for hours it's really that addicting so uh, but anyway i i kind of just wanted to affect the bottom left of the brain 
or the bottom half of the brain. Um, obviously, I'm trying to fill up some space on the left-hand side because I have that rectangle on the right side. So I'm really thinking about composition right here. Now it's time to add some text to my design. Brain Dead isn't anything specific. I just came up with a name on the spot. If it's a brand or something, I, it's it's whatever to me, honestly. It's a, it's a name that I added to a design. I always have people commenting on my videos. Isn't that already a clothing brand, Charlie? Like, what the hell are you doing? Like, dude, chill chill it's a freaking name you guys would be surprised some of the comments i read on the daily basis like i give out free information and i get so much hate and so many people assuming that i'm stealing stuff like i'm not stealing anything <laughs> like that's not what i do i teach graphic design that's what i do so chill the fuck out in the comment section seriously um i literally just started blocking people because of that that's how fed up i am of it like doing this since 2013 you just get tired of it it gets really old but i found this font called mars attack and i really really like it and i found this on envato market or sorry envato elements it's a really nice font um, you can pick any font you like. Now what I'm doing is actually duplicating Brain Dead, and I want to add a black version of it under the red version. That way I can create a drop shadow. Now, I realize I didn't have to do it this way. I could have just added a drop shadow. It would have accomplished the same thing, and it would have saved my layers. Or I would, I guess you could say I would have had one last layer. But um, nonetheless, that, that's the effect I'm going for. I want it to look like it's kind of coming off the brain. It has a drop shadow, right? So it's creating some dimension. And you guys know how much I love texture, so I'm using a soft round brush with the blend mode dissolve and adding texture on a new layer above brain dead, um, which is the red brain dead, not the bottom uh, drop shadow layer. And what this is going to do is allow me to add some really nice texture to the bottom half of brain dead. And then from there, I'm just adding an inner glow of the same red color as my font. That way it can blend. You guys already know how I am with my textures. I love them. There is definitely such thing as too much texture though, so do not overdo it. So we have our header, right? We have Brain Dead. That's our brand name. Let's add some subheaders to our design. This is what I call them. You can call them whatever you want, but basically I want some other design elements, so I'm just adding some random uh, random text. I don't even know what I'm typing out. Literally just typing out some random stuff that comes to my mind. Um, none of this means anything, but it's okay. It just adds to the design and the overall look. I did find this wave pattern online, so I wanted to add that to the background to give the design even more dimension. And as you can see, I'm just messing with the colors a little bit. So what I ended up doing was actually just making these lines white and then changing the color later on to a lighter gray color to blend in with the background to make it more subtle and then adding a layer mask to just mask out certain parts that I wanted to blend into the shirt fabric more obviously because our black color our background color is our shirt color right so um, that's the way I look at it and I needed to find a way to blend these waves into the shirt color so that's what I'm doing right here and it's not really difficult it just it's just a little time consuming but what isn't right so the next thing I want to do is add a layer above my brain and then I'm just going to paint red, okay? And the reason why is because I just wanted to give the design something else. It, it just, I, I don't know, it was lacking something. There was too much white. So I wanted to add a little bit more balance with the colors. So um, what I'm doing is actually creating a clipping mask and the brain is in a group right now. So I'm creating a clipping mask and just adding that red color to the brain and then I'm using blend modes to delete it from my highlights and then this is what it looks like. Now it's time to fill up some space on the left side. There's a lot of negative space. So I'm adding some more text of course and I am going to make this vertical text. So if you look at the top right, or sorry, top left of Photoshop, you'll see a T with arrows down. You just want to click that and that will change the text to vertical. And there also is a vertical type tool that you can use. But I like this look and I'm just typing out again some random words. <laughs> That's all I'm doing. And I come up with this stuff on the spot most of the time because this isn't for an actual client obviously so I don't have anything to really go off of. So I'm using my imagination. The design's 99% done. That 1% is basically making adjustments to some small stuff like maybe I don't like the positioning of the right side elements so I can mess with those. For instance, I noticed that the text on the right side right next to our diagram on the left there was something off about it so I did end up editing that and adding a little bit more white to it so it says patient 0100 okay that's just a patient number why not I wanted to make that middle text white just to give it some balance again everything's about balance to me there's actually a couple other things I wish I would have done on the left side like added maybe a white line or something but anyway we're not gonna go there and I also wanted to move my diagram over because I realized the design is getting a little off balance it's too right heavy so I'm using my rulers to kind of figure out where things need to sit. And 
our design space, I guess you can say, and this is what I came up with. So this is the final design and now it's time to mock it up. So I'm using a hoodie by the mock shop. This is not my hoodie. I will be coming out with my own hoodie mock-ups. I will be using my own t-shirt mock-up though that you can buy on my website right now. That is linked in the description below along with all the design resources that we discussed today. Um, if you are a member of my channel, just so you know, if you are a level three member, you do get access to this design file. I'm about to upload that probably within the next week or even sooner. So um, definitely keep an eye out on that. But this is kind of like the determining factor if our design worked or not. Like if it doesn't look good on merch, then you probably don't want to print it, right? But I think this one looks really, really cool. I can see it in Hot Topic or something. One extra tip before I go, I usually copy my entire designs canvas copy merge and then paste it in place or just paste it, it doesn't matter and then I go to blend modes and I delete the black out of the design so it's ready for DTG printing uh, screen printing there is a more lengthy process to separate the colors but we're not going to get into that in this video but nonetheless now it is print ready most screen printers and DTG printers like PNG files PDF files Photoshop files, AI files, all that good stuff. So just ask your print shop what files they prefer. And that's as simple as it gets, guys. That concludes Merch Design episode 22. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something new today. If you did, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe if you aren't already, and don't forget to turn on notifications so you guys know exactly when I upload my next tutorial. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Keep creating, keep being awesome. Peace. Come all ye faithful.